Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today I'm making the F15E Strike Eagle in 172nd scale from Revel. Brand new tooling, only just arrived in the shops. We'll be having a look how it goes together, have a look at some of the instructions, which can be a challenge at times, and then have a look at the finished kit. If you're thinking of buying one, you might want to check out the unboxing video, a companion video already available on my channel. If you've already got one or it's on the way to you at the moment, then this is the video for you. Now, if you enjoy the video and you'd like to see more, please do remember to subscribe by clicking on the button in the lower right corner. If you really, really like the video and would like to help support future productions, then there are links to Buy Me and Coffee and Patreon in the information box below. Let's get on and see how I made the F-15E Strike Eagle. My first job is to prime some of the parts on the sprue, mainly those going into the cockpit. Assembly starts with the ejection seats. The seat itself fits into these back parts, which come in two halves. Next I'll spray the cockpit interior. I'm using Vallejo Dark Gold Grey as that seems to be the standard interior for US fighters. These parts fit very tightly so make sure all the bonding faces are sanded and clean. Here the front and rear cockpit tubs fit together. Then the nose wheel bay fits on underneath. The side instrument panels get some anthracite dark grey, not pure black. The sides of the ejection seats are black and the seats themselves are mainly this tan colour. When that's dried, the inner panels are painted in a bronze green. Instrument panels can go in next. Here you see that some of them are black so they won't show up if you've painted the panels black too. Parts of the instrument panel get some black, such as the base of the heads-up display. The screens get a dark green painted in. While all that dries, add some yellow detailing to the handles of the ejection seats. Back to the instruments, and I'm using some decal softener. This is Microset, as there is a lot of relief on the panel. Apply to the part, then slide the decal on top. Just keep pressing gently down and adding more softener. Of course, it doesn't help if the decal's too big for the panel, but that's a common problem. Just do what you can. And while that dries, I'll go back to the seats and add this loop of metal paint on the top. I've also added a random red to the gas bottles on the side of the seat. And make sure you remember that the front seat has the longer risers, as you can see here. Then the seats can push into the cockpit. Now they are a very tight fit. I've also given these side instrument panels a dry brush with white to bring out some of the relief. And when you're happy with them, the main instrument panels can slot into place in the cockpit tub. Next are two pieces of combing on top of the instrument clusters. Now maybe I should have put the stick in a little bit earlier, but it goes in okay now. Then there's this grab bar over the rear combing, pre-painted in black. Now if you look on each of the two identical stores sprues, there's this tiny, teeny control stick. These go on either side of the rear seat. Next, the first of the issues I have with the instructions. Now, you can see here it says drill a hole for the pitot tubes, but where it says to drill them, there's already something else moulded in, some other sensors. There is already a hole, it's just in a different location. On the drawings at the back, the pitot tubes clearly go into where the pre-drilled holes are, so just drill out the existing holes to size. With that sorted out, I can fit the cockpit tub to the front fuselage. It goes together remarkably well, I thought. Just tape it up and leave it to dry. Onwards then to the main part of the body. 
First the air inlets, these come in halves which I've sprayed white inside. Then this part with the fan discs goes on the back. Now I've painted the fans with burnt iron. I don't imagine I'll see them ever again anyway. Clamp it all up to set. When that's dried, you can set the lower skin of the wings in place either side of these intakes and again clamp them up to set. Now more drilling in the instructions. Now these two holes in the middle of the belly are for the centre fuel tank. A one millimetre drill bit is needed. Now here either side of the tail are two holes that need to be drilled out with two millimetre bits. Quite big. But they don't. Really. They are way too big. These are for part A65 on each side. They go on in steps 18 and 19. Use a one millimetre drill in the middle of these holes. Luckily the parts themselves cover the holes when they're fitted. Next, the lower mid fuselage joins the lower rear fuselage. Again, snaps into place very, very well. Then the inlets and lower wing skins can be joined to the one piece upper wing. Again, I'm, I'm struck by how well all this goes together. Just tape it up, clamp the pieces together. When they're done, the lower body can be joined as well. Next we have these wing root pieces. The starboard side one has the gun port in it. Next we make the inlet bodies for each side. The two halves just simply slot together. Back to the body and here you can see the tiny outlets that apparently were to require a couple of two mil holes to keep in place. Spoiler alert, they don't. Anyway, then the conformal fuel tanks can go on either side of the fuselage. Tape it all up to set. That done, add this rear cockpit section to the front of the fuselage. Then the air inlets can slide into place. When those are secure, the cockpit section itself can slide in as well. The nose cone goes on. There's a tab to make sure it's aligned correctly. And now we have the basic F-15E made. Now for the engines. Now the first thing I'm going to do is run some burnt iron paint inside the exhausts to darken them down. For each exhaust there are five exhaust petals. Make sure each one is free of any sprue remnants. There's a small locator tab on each one that fits on the inside of the exhaust ring. Just run a line of glue along the inside of the ring and place the tabs one by one. The last one takes a little bit of juggling to get it in, but once they are all in place, adjust them so they form a smooth ring and then seal with ultra thin cement. Then repeat for the other engine. Okay, so now for each engine, there are 15 actuators. These need to be cut off the sprue with a craft knife. You could replace them with a bit of 1mm polystyrene rod if you break any. Then it's just a case of fitting them one by one with one end in a small U-shaped slot on the edge of the engine body and the other end at a small tab on the pestle. They do go on surprisingly well. Before you know it, the engine's complete and you know what, it looks really quite good. Again, repeat for the other engine and leave both somewhere really safe to dry. Other jobs we can do now include assembling the wheels. These come in halves that fit together. Bond them with some ultra thin cement. I'm also going to make the canopy mask now, just using tape. Do the edges carefully first with thin tape. Cut any excess with a very sharp knife where needed. And then fill in the gap with larger pieces. Before the canopy can go on, I do need to add the heads up display glass. I didn't do it earlier in case I knocked it off by accident. There are two internal pieces for the canopy. This one in the middle supports a brace when the aircraft is parked and the rear one is a cover for the hinge mechanism. Then the canopy can slot into place and the windshield can sit in front of it. Now I use contactor clear cement for this so I'm going to leave it to dry well. I'd normally leave this overnight. 
Next day, and I'll start on the stores pylons. There's a long pylon on each side that comes in two halves. Glue them together, then set into the underside of the fuselage. Then there are six smaller pylons that go on, each again in two halves for some reason. Then I fit together the two belly electronics pods, each comes in two halves of course, and I'll assemble the three external fuel tanks. For the wing tanks I'll also add the launch rails for the Sidewinder missiles. The missiles themselves come as a large single centrepiece with two small fins to be added. I'm not sure why this extra step is needed because the bigger Sparrow missiles, not used in this version but supplied anyway, are moulded as single pieces. Anyway, next the many bombs. Six dumb iron bombs and four smart bombs, each of which of course is in two halves. The smart bombs also have these larger separate fins for the tail that need to be added. Then there are these two large air scoops that go on either side of the fuselage. I guess these are for electronics. With pretty much most of the construction done, I can start painting. So first of all, I'm going to put a coat of gloss black primer on the engine exhausts. The aircraft gets a coat of grey primer, then finished in medium gunship grey. And when that's done, the exhaust can get a coat of burnt iron metallic. When the aircraft dry, I can mask off a portion of the tail to be sprayed with metallic dark aluminium, or maybe Dural. Once all the paint has dried, I'll coat it with gloss varnish and then I can start the decals. Now, I've kept the tail separate as this makes masking the body a lot easier. The only really tricky bit is this band around the top of the tail. As usual, just take your time and use a decal softener. A nice touch here and these extra little bits of decal that go on to make up for the curvature of the tail light housing. Nice touch Revel. Now while those are drying I'll add a bit of titanium silver as a contrast on the engine. It doesn't really come out very well on the video but it does look really good for real. Then I can start the main fuselage decals. The first is this long one along the spine of the aircraft. It takes a lot of nudging to get it exactly into place. There's a slit in the decal to allow for this small aerial. I really don't know why they didn't make the aerial a part you add later. Anyway, after a while it will settle into place. Just keep it moist at all times and when you're happy use your decal softener. Next I'm adding this flaming arrow but I suggest you keep it until you've done the wing decals. Part of the arrow sits on top of one of the ring decals, so I had to lift the edge of mine to get the wing decal set. Hey, look, I make the mistakes so you don't have to, right? Anyway, they look cool when they're in place. While that's drying, I'll go back to the stores, and you'll, I do need to drill out the mountings. A 0.6mm drill is fine. The moulded recesses are a bit too small. On then to the undercarriage. Now look, I checked and checked and then I checked again, but I think the part numbers on the instructions are the wrong way round for the main legs. Whatever. The main legs have a small side brace fitted first, then go into the fuselage. What matters is the wheel axle points outwards and the bracing legs point forward and inward. Just do it that way and ignore the instructions. The nose gear is a bit more of a challenge. The front strut goes in first, just feel the way until it sort of slots into place. Then the main leg sort of goes on a kind of tab at the back of the well. If you push it all the way down, then it won't fit properly. When it is right, the forward strut fits onto the apex of this triangular bit of the leg. There will also be just enough space to slot in the nose gear door. Now I'll fit the two belly electronics pods, followed by the centre fuel tank. The wheels just slot onto their respective axles, there's no flattening on these. Then the main gear doors can go on. 
Now for the stores, the bombs are all painted bronze green and light gold grey with yellow life bands as decals. There are only six stencils supplied for the 10 bombs, so I used them for just the iron bombs. The nice thing is that the bombs sit really well because the clasps have been moulded onto the pylons. Please take note, Airfix. The wing tanks can then go on. Note that I've already fitted the missiles onto their rails. And when the gear is secure, I can flip the aircraft over and slot in the tail fins. Do check the fit of these first, as they are very tight and you may need a bit of sanding for them to sit correctly. Then the engines can slot into the tail. You can see the contrast of the three metallic colours better now. Then there's an arrestor hook underneath the tail, a couple of small tail cones. Then the pitot tubes go on the side of the nose. A quick go around everywhere, touching up the paint, coat of satin varnish, and we are finished. I think it looks pretty good with its jazzy decals on a full bomb load. The fit of the parts is very good. The plastic feels harder than other makes and the parts slightly more crisp. You can see where they can adapt the kit for future versions of the Eagle as well, which explains the occasionally baffling sprue layouts and the instructions could do with a bit of a proofread. But otherwise, it's an exceptionally enjoyable build. There we go then, what a nice kit. If you like an Eagle as much as I like an Eagle, you'll be glad to have made this kit. It's got a few issues, but then, you know, what doesn't have a few issues these days, straight out of the box. Really, really nice kit. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And you can do it by clicking on the logo there in the bottom right. That will give you access to new videos as soon as they're released. And of course, my back catalog of builds. Do keep coming back. It's been great to have you here and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.